Hello and welcome to the iBooks author tutorial series. In this video I'm going to show you what's available in the book elements menu on the left side of your iBooks author window. Starting at the top of the book elements menu is the book title option. Here you can create the cover of your iBook. The cover is what your readers will see on their bookshelf in the iBooks app either on the iPad or on the Mac. In a blank template, such as the one I'm using now, it, you start with a white background and a unidentifiable book title. Uh, you can change the book title by clicking in the text box here. All about robots. And yeah, you can format that text um, as much as you like. And you can also uh, change the background of the cover. You can add in images, um, add in shapes, and uh, create a nice fancy design if you choose to. Here I have a picture on my desktop, and I'm going to just simply drag that onto my book cover to give my cover, uh, to make my cover a little more interesting for my readers. So here I have a, a nice picture of a cardboard robot for my All About Robots book. And again, this cover is what my readers will see um, sitting on their bookshelf in the iBooks app. You can also um, insert text boxes and shapes. Uh, you can insert a text box if you want to include uh, other information like the author. Um, so uh, uh, feel free to do that. We'll explore the text box and shapes tools in a later uh, video tutorial. The second option in the book elements menu is intro media. Intro media allows you to drop in a movie or an image, and the intro media will play automatically when your reader opens the book in their iBooks app. So I have a short video of a robot um, on my desktop here, and if I drag that into the intro media space, it'll load that movie, and now I have a, a nice short video that will play automatically for my readers when they open my book. The third option in the book elements menu is the table of contents. The table of contents is automatically uh, generated as you add more chapters and sections to your book as you continue to work on it. Um, here I have two chapters so far, chapter one and chapter two, and within each chapter I have at least one section, as you can see here, and so that's what's showing up in my table of contents. Um, here. Um, I can switch between my chapters by sliding down and tapping on these dots. Okay, and as you can see, um, it's showing me my chapter as well as my sections and the page numbers that they are, are currently on. On the right side of my table of contents, I do have a space, a media placeholder, where I can drag in a, um, a picture to make my table of contents a little more interesting. So here I have another picture of a robot and I can drag it into my chapter two page of my table of contents and I can adjust it for people to see. Okay, and now I can begin to create a much more interesting table of contents. Um, I can also uh, uh, change the background color of this page over here in my table of contents if I choose to. Okay, the fourth option in the book elements menu is the glossary. The glossary allows you to create a collection of uh, defined words in your book um, and uh, your reader can access those definitions as they're reading the book. So I could add a new glossary term by clicking on the plus and I could say uh, robot. Okay and over here I have some text filler. I can type over that and create a definition for the word robot. A robot is a machine. Now, whenever my readers tap on the word robot anywhere in my book, a pop-up will appear with the definition of that glossary term. And as I create more glossary terms, I can also drag them down here into this section of related glossary terms. So if I added the word uh, machine, okay, I could then uh, drag in the word machine into my related glossary terms and I can create a collection of related terms. Okay, very handy for your readers. Okay, uh, below those four options you have your book layout so I can see all of the pages of my chapters and my sections 
as well as blank pages. And um, if I had any content on these pages, they would be seen here as well. So these little thumbnails will change as you begin to build your book. Um, I can uh, expand or hide um, the pages within chapters if I don't want to see them. So if I just click on this little down arrow, I can hide the contents of chapter one if I'm not currently working on it. And if I want to get back to it, I just click the arrow again to expand. Okay. Um, of course, every chapter and every section should have a title. Um, and you can easily change that by just double clicking on the word untitled in this layout section over here. So if I wanted to call chapter one, how to build a robot, I could type directly into that space. And as you can see, when I finished, the title on the page itself changed as well. I could do the same for sections as well as my following chapters. And if I go to table of contents, that's automatically changed as well, how to build a robot. So they all kind of work together to uh, uh, build the pages um, of your book as well as the table of contents. Very handy. Uh, okay, well that's it for the book elements menu. Um, stay tuned for the next video in the iBooks Author Tutorial Series.